30 seconds before the video was started and are allegedly tamper-proof. But are they officer-proof? Say, if an officer fails to turn on a camera. Still, the comments gathered here could help police come up with a policy most community members can live with. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. The LAPD plans to hold more community meetings. Officials say complaints against police have been reduced by as much as 80% in communities where the officer on-body cameras were already in use. Divide and conquer, that's the new game plan for the LA City Fire Department. The mayor announced the fire department has been restructured into four distinct bureaus in hopes of quicker response and more specialized care for each region. Gil Reyes explains. Meet the head of the newly created L.A. City Fire Department Central Bureau. Deputy Chief Philip Flegel now oversees 23 LAFD fire stations in and around downtown. Does that mean extra pay for you? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but uh, it's, there's, there's going to be a lot more hours involved than TLN, so I think it, it kind of it equals out. For the first time in the LAFD's 129-year history, the department has been reorganized into four distinct bureaus. The philosophy being each region will receive more specialized care from commanders already familiar with those areas. Flegel, a 23-year department veteran, knows to avoid traffic on Broadway during peak hours. Also, how to most quickly respond to emergencies in area high-rises. But because of new construction in downtown, he also has to be aware of traffic trends and adjust response accordingly. Also, with all the uh, events that we have down in downtown LA Live, Staples Center, Nokia, there's a lot more significant events that we have to gear up for. The LAFD localizes operational command to speed up response. Fire stat results released last fall show firefighters arrived to emergencies a few seconds longer on average than the previous year. The LAFD's three other bureaus face similar challenges in the West Bureau. It's hard navigating through narrow roads in the Hollywood Hills. In the Valley Bureau, difficulties include the wide coverage areas in Sunland and Silmar. While in the South Bureau, first responders have to deal with heavy traffic between South LA and San Pedro. Restructuring puts each of the four bureau commanders more in touch with the communities they serve in hopes of shaving seconds off the clock when every second counts. In downtown L.A., Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Along with the Central Bureau, the LAFD has the South Bureau headquartered in San Pedro, the West Bureau located in Hollywood, and the Valley Bureau based in Sherman Oaks. LAFD plays a huge role in earthquake preparedness as well, but a new preparedness plan is asking everyone to do their part, and it's causing a rumble among property owners. Yana Kay reports. This earthquake drill in Los Angeles may help Angelinos get better prepared for an earthquake, but many earthquake specialists say it's hardly enough. Seismic advisor Lucy Jones, who wrote Mayor Eric Garcetti's Resilience by Design Earthquake Preparedness Plan, officially presented the plan to city council. The plan outlines strategies to help the city's older structures withstand the big one. It's going to greatly increase the likelihood that the building is going to be up and functioning and rentable and inhabitable. The proposal, which also looks at improving telecommunications and water systems, includes a mandatory requirement for building owners to retrofit wood-framed and concrete structures. These are the deadliest buildings. These are the ones that when they do collapse, we're talking about concrete coming down on people. But many apartment building homeowners say that while they agree that the buildings need to be retrofitted, they also say that they can't afford the cost. Please provide the money. Put it on the table before you pass this kind of an ordinance. Where is the money going to come from? If you're willing to pay for this retrofitting, I'm all for it. I don't have the money and I'm willing to go to jail. Councilmember Bob Blumenfield submitted a motion that would offer building owners access to private lending sources through the Property Assessed Clean Energy, or PACE, program. PACE financing was initially set up for energy and water efficiency projects. It takes that, that big issue of, of how you finance it, and it puts a practical element of it so that folks can finance it over time. It can be on their property taxes. When it comes to her plan, Lucy Jones says the goal is to make sure Los Angeles is still standing after the big one hits. I'm Yana Kay for L.A. This Week. 
Councilmember Bob Blumenfield presented a second motion calling on the city attorney to prepare and present an ordinance requiring the construction of new cell communication towers. And the LA region's fire units have been working hard at being disaster ready for an earthquake or any emergency. Their latest mock trial also included some high-tech hardware, a rescue drone. Anna Marcos takes a look. You're seeing the aftermath of a catastrophic disaster. A 7.2 earthquake has hit an area that includes homes and a plant from which chemicals are leaking. Cars are overturned and fires are raging. But none of this is real. This is a simulated disaster at the Santa Fe Springs Regional Training Center. 13 agencies, including the L.A. Fire Department, are testing their disaster readiness and, oh yes, their new surveillance and rescue drone. People would think that the word drone is armed with weapons, but the ones that are being used here today is simply just a means to get a camera higher and give the ground units an aerial perspective, which helicopters cannot do currently. The drone helps not only in assessing the damage, but in locating victims. This is an exercise simulating a 7.2 earthquake along the Whittier Fault. And uh, the scenario involves a red flag alert, which uh, translates to several uh, resources being out of their jurisdictions and the need for uh, multiple agencies. Santa Fe Springs Fire Department Division Chief Michael Ewell heads up the command center. It's up to him to get the entire L.A. area organized and get search and rescue and hazmat teams on the scene. I need to uh, take charge. I've called for resources. As for the drone, it touches down after its virgin voyage, locating victims for L.A. County fire units. We're guessing it's a gadget that's here to stay. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. The new chief of LAPD cadets was formally introduced at a recent police commission meeting. Gil Reyes has more on the program that helped turn the new cadet chief's life around. How's it feel? I feel special. <laughs> a special honor for the newly named chief of the LAPD's cadet program. Chief Laura Mendoza is permitted to sit in the chair usually reserved for police commission president Steve Soboroff. Soboroff graciously takes a back seat so she can speak. As a result of the support and encouragement that this program has provided me, I am confident and I'm a very goal-driven young woman in charge of my own future. Mendoza, who grew up shy and scared with gangs in her neighborhood, now oversees a growing volunteer police force. She also boasts a 4.0 GPA at Cal State Los Angeles. She credits the LAPD cadet program. Young people like her work crowd control at special events, man the front desks at police stations, and learn to be leaders. The LAPD cadet program has roughly 6,000 members strong, all of them between the ages of 13 and 20, part of the recipe for successful community policing that officials say has brought crime down to historic lows in the city of Los Angeles. I have seen firsthand how this community involvement helps build the trust in our communities. This program has transformed many parents' negative perceptions toward the LAPD to more positive ones as a direct result of their child's involvement. This is about transforming their lives in the communities we, we serve. And so it's been uh, an extraordinary opportunity. To LAPD Assistant so Chief Earl Pacinger helped transition what used to be known as the LAPD Explorers into the cadet program. The main difference now, young people don't have to pursue careers in law enforcement to participate. One of these young people may become chief of cadets someday and even possibly sit in the commission president's chair as well. In downtown L.A., Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Volunteer cadet programs take place at all 21 LAPD community stations. The city's Department of Recreation and Parks has launched a new fitness program. It's a program that's not only benefiting residents, it's also offering meaningful employment to former military personnel.
The LA Department of Recreation and Parks announced a partnership with Coca-Cola called Troops for Fitness at a recent ceremony at the Silmar Recreation Center. As part of a three-year grant, the Coca-Cola Troops for Fitness program will offer workshops and classes to young kids and adults instructed by veterans at a select number of recreation and parks facilities. Where former military, now veterans, will be helping the community learn yoga, learn conditioning, learn a strength building, do different types of classes led by real professionals, people who know what it is to be fit, and the goal is to make Los Angeles healthier. Veterans will also lead exercise programs including boot camps, golf clinics, running groups, swim classes, and hiking workouts, just to name a few. The initial grant for this program is nearly $200,000. The program will begin at Penmar Rec Center, South Los Angeles Sports Activity Center, Shadow Ranch, and Lincoln Park Rec Center. This program is wonderful because it means additional funding to provide services at the parks for children and then also a way to employ veterans. Los Angeles joins Detroit, Honolulu, Boston, Atlanta, Miami, Newark, and Sacramento as the eighth major U.S. metropolitan area to implement Coca-Cola Troops for Fitness. Additional centers will be added as more veterans are hired to lead participants in fitness programs. The Hollywood sign is a huge draw for tourists in Tinseltown, but the view, at least from one vantage point in Beechwood Canyon, just became more limited as city leaders work to reduce traffic in the area. Anna Marcos takes a hike and brings us this report. Beechwood Canyon visitors hoping to get an up-close look at the Hollywood sign will come up against a new roadblock. If the security guard doesn't stop you, then the security gate and no access sign will. I'd seen the sign says no access, but he said you can go up, you can walk, but we're just trying to discourage the traffic. People would go in and smoke a joke, drink beer, and kind of do bad things. Well, now there's a, a secure gate there. For the last five years, the internet and mobile apps only made the problem worse, crowding cars and visitors into the narrow streets of these neighborhoods. The new electronic security gate makes it more difficult for visitors because now they have to hike a longer way just to see the sign. Still, we didn't see much discouragement along the trail. We walked all the way up to the Hollywood sign, like right above it, and there was, there was a fence so you can't really touch it or anything like that. Um, and so worth it. The view was incredible, and it was definitely worth it. Are you sure you can hike all the way up to the sign? Yes. yes. You're not going to get tired? No. Yes. Probably, but we'll, we'll keep on going. Do you think that that gate will discourage more people? I think so, because I saw a lot of cars turning around. We did see a lot of this and this. Cars stopping, cars turning around. In other words, cars creating a traffic mess. Exactly what the $200,000 gate is meant to discourage. But most residents are giving it a positive spin. Well, it has been very needed because, um, as he said, very often there is no one stopping at the stop signs. They just barrel right on through. Uh, speed has been a problem. You know, I have a little granddaughter out here that I worry about. Um, there does seem to be a lot of traffic, so I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I, I, oh, wait, I haven't, just, there hasn't been enough time. The bottom line is you can park and walk through the gate, which just means a longer walk to the sign, but only on weekdays. On weekends, you can't park here at all. Oh, well, there's always a selfie from the bottom of the hill. At least you can say you visited the Hollywood sign. I'm Anna Margos for L.A. This Week. The gate will be open to hikers from 5 a.m. to sunset, but there is a parking ban in the area on weekends and holidays. The city is working on continuing a paid weekend shuttle service to the Hollywood sign from Griffith Park that was launched last year. Aviation officials investigate a small airplane crash in the valley that claimed the pilot's life and improvements at two local parks. These stories in City Beat. <laughs> The FAA and National Transportation Safety Board officials are investigating the fatal crash of a small airplane on January 9th around 1 p.m. near Van Nuys Airport shortly after takeoff on the southwest corner of Van Owen Street and Havenhurst Avenue, a busy intersection in the valley. 
Los Angeles Fire Department officials say the crash killed the pilot, 47-year-old Alberto Enrique Bayer, a professor at Arizona State University who had worked for nearly two decades at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. No one else was aboard the aircraft, a single-engine Land Care 320, and no one on the ground was injured. The runway at Van Nuys Airport was inspected following the crash and declared operational. The Watson and O Street Park at 1303 East O Street in Wilmington now features a new playground. Park officials say will benefit nearly 6,000 children under the age of five who live within just a two-mile radius of the park. Park officials say the industrial nature of the area makes open space scarce, but that the new playground was made possible thanks to a grant from First 5 LA, along with additional funding from Reckon Parks and from Councilman Joe Buscaino's office. At-risk young adults who are part of the job training program at the LA Conservation Corps put in the labor to remove concrete and install the play equipment. The Department of Recreation and Parks also recently cut the ribbon at Ascot Hills Park on Multnomah Street to commemorate recent improvements to the park. Improvements at the approximately 100-acre park include a new shade structure and educational signage. These upgrades mark the completion of a third phase of renovations made to the Ascot Hills Park in recent years. The improvements have been a collaborative effort between Reckon Parks, the Office of Council District 14, and the City's Bureau of Engineering. The oldest city fire station in the San Fernando Valley recently held a cookout and safety fair to celebrate 75 years of service. Gil Reyes was there. Thick smoke billowing from the valley, but no need for alarm. It's just burgers on the grill, a barbecue party to celebrate 75 years of service from the L.A. City Fire Department's Van Nuys Station. Retired firefighter Harry Grotti served here off and on for nearly two decades. I can't say enough about the job, first of all. This is the greatest job in the world. It was for me. And uh, I met a number of very, very good people uh, that I often think about every day. Grotti considers the 1971 Silmar earthquake and response as perhaps his most memorable assignment here. But Fire Station 39's history goes back much further than that. The LAFD's oldest active fire station and the first in the valley opened its doors in 1939. Even on its anniversary party, the firehouse serves the public by offering a crash course on disaster preparedness. Packing these take-home safety checklists with tips like having working smoke alarms in your home, testing those smoke alarms once a month, and practicing fire escape plans with your family. This puppet show reminds children to stay down and crawl out if caught in heavy smoke. Because smoke rises, cleaner, cooler air will be near the floor. Important tips for making it out safely, even while celebrating a milestone. At the Van Nuys Fire Station 75th anniversary party, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Despite objections from some residents, the L.A. City Council has approved plans to build an all-new Van Nuys fire station to replace the original one you just saw. In this week's list of things to do, snow days at the L.A. Zoo, Shen Yun, and putting your own spin on an existing museum exhibit. Seeing snow doesn't require a drive up to the mountains. The L.A. Zoo will be hosting snow days at the zoo on Saturday and Sunday, January 24th and 25th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The wintry fun features a rare opportunity to watch animals exploring snowy wonderlands in several habitats. Zoo visitors can also play on a special sledding hill, see elaborate ice carving demonstrations, and pose for photos in an inflatable snow globe. All activities are free with paid zoo admission. The LA Zoo and Botanical Gardens is located in Griffith Park at 5333 Zoo Drive. Go to lazoo.org for details. In the Skirball Cultural Center's last weekends of the month event for January, which falls on Saturday and Sunday, the 24th and 25th, you can make your own contribution to the imaginative exhibition forest called For the Trees. Stroll through the magical forest made of yarn, then work to create your own flora and fauna out of yarn, thread, and felt to add to the installation. 
The museum's fun-filled Saturdays and Sundays feature special last weekend only performances and activities that change every month. Drop in any time during regular museum hours. The last entry is at 4.30 p.m. Last weekends of the month events are included with museum admission. Go to skirball.org. You've probably seen ads for this everywhere, Shen Yoon. So why not catch the show at the Dolby Theater at 6801 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood on Saturday, January 24th from 2 to 4.30 p.m. You can describe it as Cirque du Soleil with an ancient Chinese twist. Shen Yun takes you on an extraordinary journey to the lost land of the ancient Middle Kingdom, where audiences experience classical Chinese dance, the sound of an orchestra that combines East and West, and stunning animated backdrops and exquisite costumes. Go to shenyun.com slash LA for other dates and times during the show's Southern California tour. And that's a look at some upcoming things to do. Volunteers have pulled up their sleeves to breathe life into one of San Pedro's most iconic tourist attractions. Yana Kay reports. David Weir is an airline pilot, but today he's volunteering his time on the ground to help clean and restore the famed battleship Iowa in San Pedro. It's, it's remarkable to be on the ship and uh, in some small way at least uh, participate in beautifying it for other people to be able to see it. David is one of about 275 volunteers from Tourism Cares, a nonprofit organization for tourism and travel professionals that works with the tourism industry to restore and preserve American icons and tourist destinations like the USS Iowa for future generations. They're really getting a ton of good work done. Crews have been working hard cleaning walls, putting in lights, stripping and buffing floors and painting. As you can see, I paint all over me. <laughs> The CEO of Tourism Care says the goal is to encourage travel professionals and others to give back and build communities in up-and-coming neighborhoods. We want to go somewhere where our volunteering can make a big difference, our resources can make a big difference, and our voice and our influence can also make a big difference. And thanks to some TLC from these volunteers, officials hope the USS Iowa will continue to stand tall and proud. I'm Yana Kay for LA This Week. The LA waterfront in San Pedro welcomes more than 1.5 million visitors each year. That's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We're also on Twitter as LATW35. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile get fire adapted now learn simple steps at fireadapted.org hi my name is michael poon let me tell you about one of the programs that office of finance offers the taxpayer advocate program the taxpayer advocate program is designed to provide personal assistance to taxpayers who have complex business tax problems that have not been resolved in the usual manner. The Taxpayer Advocate is dedicated to researching and resolving issues and complaints from taxpayers after an exhaustive effort has been made to resolve them. There are four ways to reach the Taxpayer Advocate. First, you may send a fax at 213-928-9390, attention Taxpayer Advocate. Second, you may send an email at finance.advocate at lacity.org. Third, you may send a letter through U.S. Mail at Office of Finance, 200 North Spring Street, Room 101, Los Angeles, California, 90012, Attention Taxpayer Advocate. Or fourth, 
you may ask any of finance employees to refer you to the taxpayer advocate. Don't worry, Patty. This isn't going to hurt me one bit. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Shapiro in beautiful Encino, and you're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel. Open wide.
Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Friday, January 23rd. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this uh, city council meeting, your city council. This council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Madam Clerk, we do have a quorum. Would you please call the roll? Blumenfeld, Bonnet, Buscato, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Wizard, Caress, Recording, LaBange, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, Wesson. Ten members present, a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. First order of business. Approval of the minutes. Mr. O'Farrell yes. moves. Price seconds. Next. Next is committed to resolutions for approval. Englander moves. Bonin seconds. That brings us where? President, would you like to run through the agenda? That would be fine. Items one and two are items for which public hearings have been held. Okay, on items one and two, specials, members, I do not see any if we could prepare to vote on those items if we could open the roll close the roll tabulate the vote 10 eyes okay next items three and four are items which public hearings have not been held 10 votes required for consideration okay without objection those items are now before this body do we have cards yes cards on both items okay so then let's move on on the continuation agenda, item five is an item for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. So again, without objection, this item is now before us. Uh, Mr. Price. Report on item five. Do we have any cards on five? Yes, there's cards on five. Okay, so we'll hold that, hold that one. because we have cards from the public. Uh, continue, Madam Clerk. In fact, uh, we have to wait until 10.15 to move on with other agenda, agenda items. So why don't we, at this point, we can go to presentations uh, or take up indiv individual items, correct? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, so what I'd like to do is shh. I would like to acknowledge or recognize Mr. Tom Labange. Uh, to, to present to us a very important group of visitors. Well, Mr. LeBons, yeah. the floor is yours. Mr. President and uh, Mr. Price, Mr. Buscaida, if you want to join me as the ad hoc committee on the Special Olympics, this is a delegation that has come uh, on a conference uh, to learn all about what's going to happen starting on the 25th, Mr. Bonin, of July. Special Olympics, and you've been so helpful, Mr. Bonin, with the LAX connection and the passageway through. I didn't want the day to go by when I saw them yesterday. I said, you got to come to City Hall and say hello as we're going to get pumped up, high up, for the Special Olympics. <laughs> Elga Sharp. Uh, chief of Protocol Emeritus, now Protocol Chief for the Special Olympics, Elga. Good it's good to see you again. Thank you very much, um, Council President, Council Members. Um, this is old home for me, but I'm delighted to be back and to see everyone again. I had no problem getting parking, which is a very <laughs> big deal here at City Hall. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to allow us to be here. And I would like to introduce our first speaker, who is the head of the Middle East and, and Special Olympics um, program, Mr. Ayman Wahab, who is also the personal advisor to the president of Egypt. Welcome, sir. Good job. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks for all the members here for hosting us today. Actually, uh, everyone is happy. I was just talking to all the head of delegations and they are very uh, uh, appreciative of your uh, time and host. Um, as the president of the Special Olympics Middle East North Africa, we have 23 countries belonging to this region, all the Arab world plus Iran. And let me tell you, all these countries are coming to the World Games with 600 athletes from this region. Uh, the Special Olympics, not because I'm the president for the region, but the Special Olympics were able to actually build new boundaries between the countries. No boundaries whatsoever. I believe that this is a great chance for us, great chance for the group, 
and a great chance for every athlete to experience LA. And I want to congratulate you on a lovely city. And at the same time, as I saw yesterday through the, in, the web page, I think there are distinguished also members representing uh, this council and representing the city. So thank you for hosting us. And let me introduce you uh, one of our great programs. Of course, everyone thinks that the war and the civil uh, actions taking place in Syria will stop our people from coming here, but this is not correct. We have here the head of delegation of Syrian team coming to the games. Good morning. Sabah al khair is in my language. I'm very happy to be here. Even though of the wars going in my country, I would like to thank the State Department to help me to obtain the visa. So I had to travel to Lebanon to obtain my visa. But still, I'm very happy. Thank you, LA, for hosting us. Thank you all. I hope you, you help my country in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you thank both. You. Hey, uh, real quick, it's like Dick Clark used to do, name and age, country, and number of athletes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am here on behalf of Special Olympic Latino America. We are, we are going to have here more than 20 countries and more than 600 athletes from around all our region. And you will see the, the powerful message that they are going to deliver here in Los Angeles. I invite you to join, uh, invite to, to the community to join this moment that is going to be wonderful and powerful for all the citizens here in this wonderful city. Thank you very much for having us here. Europe, Eurasia, Ireland. Europe, Eurasia, and Ireland. Morning, morning, and thank you very much for the opportunity. There will be 3,000 athletes from Europe, Eurasia, and 100 athletes from Ireland coming in July. So we're very much looking forward to it, and thank you again for your hospitality. From India. Good morning, everybody. Greetings morning. from India. We have got 36 million ID athletes, intellectual disabled, but we are going to be here with 242 athletes, 62 coaches, 24 support staff, and five delegations, a total of 333 representations from India. I would like to put on records that I would like to thank the city of LA for hosting this event. And I can assure you that you have brought smiles on the faces of our athletes. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you very much. Hi, good morning. I'm Laura Smith from Special Olympics Great Britain. We have a delegation of 170 uh, coming in July, and we thank you very much for hosting the event. Thank you. Super. Great Britain. Thank you for uh, welcoming us all. I'm coming from a country and the only country that uh, have more than 5,000 Jewish, Arab, and Muslims, which is Morocco. Wow. So uh, I'm thanking you all, uh, and I'm asking you uh, also to, to uh, help us spread the peace and spread uh, the uh, acceptance in the world yes. with this LA Games. And we are coming uh, 70... Uh, 47, sorry, uh, delegates, and we're spreading the peace and the acceptance in the world. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I want to put a shout out for Rick's Cafe in Casablanca. It's a good place. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to you all. Okay, here we go, right here. Hi, my name is Laura Valverde. I come from Costa Rica. We are bringing 286 people to the LA Games. So even though we're a small country, we're bringing the best of our country for you to get to know us. And we thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. President, I thank council, all of you. It's exciting. Do you feel it? It's coming. This is good. Lift our hands up. Yep. All the help. Just, just a quick, I forgot, but Go it's right very in. important now. I, you know that I'm not in the GOC, so I have no interest in that. But I hope that you will help the GOC financially at this stage because they need your help to be able to make the games a wonderful one. So please don't forget to help them financially. Yes. I'm not taking anything. <laughs> so. you got to fill out a public comment card now there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is a small gift from Syria to you. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Hands Mr. LeBange. Hands up, hands up, hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Let's give them a welcome. round of applause. They really yeah. deserve it. Good job. Good Show job. them that they're welcome. Hands up. 
Well, no, they do that for the special limits. That's not you, Jefferson. Mr. Labonge, I just want to say that the city of Los Angeles is extremely excited, and the city will partner with each and every one of the wonderful countries that will be visiting with us in July, and we'll do everything that we can to make this a very, very successful uh, event. I think we're now going to get a word from uh, uh, our councilman from the uh, San Pedro area, Watts yes. area, Joe Buscaino. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, San Pedro is one of several host cities that will welcome athletes before the games begin. Um, we, are, we just got the official word a couple days ago that San Pedro will be hosting both uh, Croatia and Kazakhstan. So we welcome these athletes in San Pedro with open arms, and we thank uh, Marymount College, um, their waterfront campus, for providing the housing uh, for these athletes to, to officially welcome them into the city. Thank you so much, and thank it's you. amazing we welcome this delegation on behalf of this entire city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buska. You know, Mr. Price. Mr. Price. He's got the best address in, city, in the whole city. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'm, I'm just honored to be on this uh, ad hoc committee and to uh, be working with these uh, athletes that are going to be coming from all over the world uh, to Los Angeles. We know that uh, they're going to be making the rounds many parts of the city, proud that they're going to be uh, playing in the Coliseum and, and, and that Los Angeles was going to be the official host of these games. Uh, but just underscores the rich uh, Olympic legacy that exists here in Los Angeles and our appreciation for the role that sports plays. And so we look forward to uh, some great games and our guests we are, are always welcome here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Thank you all. Let's give them another round of applause. And again, welcome. Mr. Uh, Buscaino, why don't we uh, we'll move into our second presentation. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Buscaino, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. As we know, the city of Los Angeles is an international city. Everyone will find a home here. And it's great to officially welcome um, an Italian diplomat for the first time to City Hall. And I'll start off with some Italian words. Ciao tutti. Oggi sono fiero di potervi introdurre il Consolo Genolare di Italia, Signore Antonio Verde. Give him a round of applause. Why don't you join me, Antonio? <clears throat> il suo direzione include gli stati California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico. Lui e io condividiamo lo stesso scopo, avanzare e angrendare la cultura italiana. Visto che ci sono tanti italiani in California, soprattutto a San Pedro. Today I'm proud uh, being able to introduce to each and every one of you my colleagues, uh, Consul General of Italy, Mr. Antonio Verde. His jurisdiction includes states in California, Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico. And one of the goals we shared is to advance and enlarge the Italian culture celebrating its contributions to our city and seeing that there are many Italians in California, specifically here in um, Los Angeles in San Pedro, which is the largest Italian community in Southern California. And also we celebrate the fact that the Port of Los Angeles does trade with um, Italy um, and it's our efforts to increase our trade relationships within our respective countries. Mr. Verdes has um, also been the Consul General in Italy, um, of Italy in Sydney and has worked at Italian embassies in Moscow and Tokyo. He has held a plethora of positions in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Rome and at the Council of Europe on behalf of Italy and thus has spent a lifetime uh, fostering diplomacy between um, Italy and other nations. His commitment to public service and international affairs has helped further deepen the ties and roots um, the, the United States has with the people in Italy, especially here in Los Angeles. Um, Mr. Jim D'Antona, fine Italian-American here, Chief of Staff of Councilwoman Nuri Martinez, is just glowing with pride as one of our 
uh, proud Italian Americans. Thank you, Jim, for joining us. So with that, uh, colleagues, it's uh, with great pleasure that I introduce to you the first time here in the John Ferraro Chambers, the new Consul General of Italy, Antonio Verde. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Good morning, Mr. President and esteemed Council members. It's indeed a great honor for me to represent Italy in a city as special as Los Angeles, and I'm grateful to be offered the opportunity to meet you. The ties between Italy and Los Angeles have been historically very deep. The first Italian arrived in Los Angeles in 1820, and by 1873, as you know much better than me, the city's Commons Council had already an Italian-American president, Frank Sabici. And today, of course, we are very, very proud to have Mr. Joe Buscaino serving on the council. Thank you so much. The very fact that we have had the councillor office in the city for well over a century is a proof of the attention the Italian government has always had for Los Angeles. And it's my intention to strengthen the ties and further develop the cultural, economic, and business relationship between my country and Los Angeles, but also to promote reciprocal knowledge. To Italy, I will say, come and see the dynamic business environment of Los Angeles that has, of course, the entertainment industry, but also Silicon Beach and powerful incubators. And I will also invite Los Angeles to go and discover all that Italy has to offer. That's biotechnologies, aerospace, machinery, renewable energies, apart from food, of course, fashion and design, for which is already known. In this regard, I invite you to take advantage of the Expo, the international exhibition that will open in Milan later this year, to see just how many possible areas of cooperation there are. My office and I are looking forward to work together with all the agencies of this great city, so do not hesitate to call on us. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thanks so much. Now, thank you very much, and welcome. So with that, colleagues, if I may um, present to uh, Mr. Verde on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, Mayor Garcetti, um, the occasion of your first visit uh, here to, into Los Angeles uh, City Hall and Council Chambers. Help me again welcome Council General Antonio Verde. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can we get one right here, Sherry? All right. All right, thanks, Sherry. And we'll Thank you. Here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. Now again, thank you uh, very much. Okay, uh, Acting President Bloomfield calls on Council Member Wesson. Thank you, oh, yeah. Acting uh, President. I, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, times of the month. It's uh, Pet Adoption Friday. I'm joined with our, one of our wonderful uh, workers, volunteers, Arlene, and she has brought to us today a gorgeous Pomeranian mix that is looking for a home. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Grady. His name is Grady. Uh, Grady is eight months old and looking for a home. He has to be one of the most attractive uh, uh, Pomeranians that I've seen, and he is all black. He's like a black fox or what have you, and he, he's beloved at the shelter. They would hate to see him go, but we... Uh, in this council have a 100% adoption rate where it relates to our dogs. So I want to just say, 
If you're looking for unconditional love, if you want a pet that's going to be with you good days and bad, I think Grady is a, a darn good candidate uh, to, to hold that position. If you are interested, call 888-452-7381. And remember, when we are able to get a dog adopted, we are literally saving his life. We have shelters throughout the city of Los Angeles, and we do our best to try to find homes for each and every animal that we have. But this is the council's uh, special appeal to those that are in this building, to those that are listening to my voice or watching us on Channel 35 or are actually here in the council chambers. If you have an interest in trying to bring home a friend a friend that you can count on. Let's please find a home for Grady today. I want to acknowledge that we have a 100% adoption rate, a 100% adoption rate. We would like to keep that adoption rate alive. Maybe we could get him to look a little more. Here, you, you want to eat the mic, Grady? See, I, he's a beautiful dog. How much would you say that he weighs? About, uh, six, about six pounds. About so. six pounds. He, we don't anticipate that he will get much uh, bigger uh, than this. I'm going to have Arlene stay with us a little while, so she'll be in the back. If you need to call your significant other or come to take a photograph so that you can send it to your mom or dad to see if you can bring Grady home. But here again, since we have been uh, finding homes for dogs in particular, members, we have found homes for over 130 dogs. We have saved the lives of at least that many animals. So let's keep the streak going. Again, if you have interest, 888-452-7381. And Grady is going to be in the back waiting for his uh, master to be, his mom and dad to be. With that, uh, Mr. Acting President, I thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wesson. So our next, our next presentation is, uh, Mr. Wezar, are you, are you ready? You ready with your presentation? Okay.
round of applause for El Sol de Mexico. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, you just heard perhaps one of the most famous songs in Mexico. It is called El Rey, and it was written and sung by one of the most popular, famous artists, singers, composers ever to come out of Mexico. And we're speaking of none other than Jose Alfredo Jimenez. And with us today, we have the honor of having Jose Alfredo Jimenez's son, who came to receive an award from the city of Los Angeles, a recognition posthumously to acknowledge the contributions that Jose Alfredo Jimenez has made to the arts. I want to welcome, quiero dar la gran bienvenida al hijo de Jose Alfredo Jimenez, Jose Alfredo Jimenez Jr., who flew here from Mexico just to be here for this presentation. Let's give a big warm round of applause to Jose Alfredo Jimenez Jr. Bienvenido, gracias. For us here in Los Angeles, we have so, when we have so many immigrants who have come from Mexico, if you speak to at least half of the population that were there to guess, if they knew that song or they know who Al Jose Alfredo Jimenez is, they'd say absolutely yes. And I'm sure it'll bring back memories and thoughts of their home country. It'll bring back memories and thoughts of their parents who listen to this music. And just across the board, the amount of music that this man wrote, the amount of songs that today some of the most popular artists from Mexico and beyond sing, it would be spectacular. And so today we are joined by Mexican Council of Political Affairs, Mario Perez. I want to give him a uh, welcome on behalf of Council, uh, Council General Sada. Bienvenido, señor. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. I also want to uh, acknowledge the presence of Don Pedro Rivera of the Rivera Musical Dynasty, the father of the late Jenny Rivera, Lupillo, and Juan Rivera. I want to give him a big uh, round of applause as well, and thank you for being here. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Yeah. Jose Alfredo Jimenez passed away more than 40 years ago, but his music, his legacy, and influence carries on today. The man was a prolific songwriter, and I just mentioned <clears throat> he wrote over 1,000 songs, and hundreds, literally hundreds, of his songs were hits and became the foundation that mariachi and ranchera music were built on and still carry on to this day. His music is timeless, beautiful, lyrical, through stories of love, challenges, and faith. His music is a soundtrack of not just our lives, but as Me Mexicans, his music is a soundtrack of our culture. His music still plays on the radio and has been interpreted by many of the top Latino artists, including Luis Miguel, Pepe Aguilar, Pedro Infante, Jorge Negrete, Javier Solis, El Tri, Chavela Vargas, Ramon Ayala, Los Tigres del Norte, and the list goes on and on and on of those now famous artists that have all tried to emulate Jose Alfredo Jimenez. The story of Jose Alfredo Jimenez is quite a remarkable one. He was born on January 19, 1926. So this Monday, we not only celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday, but also the birthday of one of Mexico's greatest artists. Jose Alfredo Jimenez was from Dolores Hidalgo, Guanajuato, Guanajuato, and composed his first song at the age of 14. I don't know what you guys were all doing at the age of 14, but he composed his first song at the age of 14. He displayed talent as a soccer player and a goalie with the Mexican first division teams Mars and Oviedo, but music was his true passion. He never received any musical training and was unfamiliar with the concepts of scales, tones, and scores, yet he composed some of the most well-crafted, musically perfect, and memorable songs in Latin music history. He sang for the first time on the radio in 1948, and only two years later had a massive hit with his song, Yo. Like many of our greatest artists, Jose Alfredo Jimenez performed in Los Angeles at our very own Million Dollar Theater in downtown Los Angeles during the late 1940s and 50s. If I listed all his hits, we'd be here for a very long, long time. And I know 
our sitting president, Bloomingfield, wouldn't want me to take, oh, it's Wesson now. He wouldn't want us to take that long. I'm back. You're back. But some of Jose Alfredo Jimenez's hits include El Rey, which you just heard, Caminos de Guanajuato, Ella, Paloma Querida, Si Nos Dejan, El Hijo del Pueblo, El Jinete, El Caballo Blanco, Un Mundo Raro, and many, many, many others. His musical and entertainment accomplishments, as I said, include more than a thousand composed songs, a hundred awards as a composer, and he starred in 23 featured films. You know your influence on a culture and on music is great. When 40 years after your death, we still talk about you in the present tense. Jose Alfredo Jimenez is a legend whose brilliance, talent, and perfect ability to combine words with music truly have no other equal. And today we honor him. I want to thank Maida Asansa for bringing this idea to our office. Maida is the niece of Jose Alfredo Jimenez. And I know there is an effort to get him a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Mr. Labange, where are you, Mr. Labange? He's not here. We need to get that message. Oh, also Mr. O'Farrell covers part of Hollywood as well. We're going to be working on a star for Jose Alfredo Jimenez on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The fact that he doesn't have one already is pretty mind-boggling. But we certainly hope that our efforts here today in having the city of Los Angeles our mayor and our city council honoring this incredible artist, we will help. So thank you, Mara, for bringing this idea to us. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite up to the microphone the son of Jose Alfredo Jimenez, who, uh, as I mentioned, flew up from Mexico to be here with us today. Uh, Jose Alfredo Jimenez, Jr. Quiero agradecer muchísimo a la ciudad de Los Ángeles. I'm very grateful to the city of Los Angeles. Un lugar que mi padre quiso tanto. This is a place that my father truly loved. Desde que yo era niño recuerdo haber estado aquí en el centro, muy cerca de aquí de downtown Los Angeles en City Hall. Y hemos disfrutado muchísimo de de este lugar. We have truly enjoyed this place. Quiero agradecer este reconocimiento. I'm truly grateful for this recognition. Que han hecho el concejal José Huizar. Thank you for all the work uh, Council por, Member Huizar has por also nuestra música, por nuestras tradiciones, done for our music, our tradition. Y a los representantes del estado de Guanajuato, Thank you to the Council and also to the representatives our, of our state of Guanajuato. Que nos han permitido venir aquí a, a recibir este este reconocimiento tan bonito. Who have allowed el us trabajo, to come here and receive this beautiful recognition. El trabajo de mi sobrina, Mayra Asanza. Thank you also to the work of my niece. Ha estado al pendiente también de la música. Who has always been up to date que para of the music. Es, es una, una tarea muy bonita el no dejar que, que caiga en el olvido. This is a very nice thing for us, for us to make sure that it's not forgotten. Y gracias a todos ustedes que la siguen cantando y que la llevan en el corazón. Thank you all also for continuing to sing it and for keeping it in your hearts. Eh, mi padre sigue presente en todos ustedes. My father este still lives in all of you guys and in this y com, city. Y como dicen todos, sigue siendo el rey con and, sus canciones. And like everyone still says, he's still the king in all of his songs. Muchas gracias a la ciudad de Los Ángeles. Thank you very much to the city of Los Angeles. Gracias. Uh, this is also very uh, personally touching for me as uh, my father, who also has since passed, he would sit long hours in his living room listening to Jose Alfredo Jimenez all night practically. I'd go to sleep, wake up at 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning, and he was still there listening to his music. And I think it's something that uh, for many of us who migrate from Mexico, uh, his music reminds us of the homeland. His music reminds us about what it means to be Mexican. And his music reminds us about those everyday things that we all live and experience. And he had a way of writing about it and touching people. There's been so many love songs. I mean, practically a majority of the songs that are written about love. But when Jose Alfredo Jimenez wrote a love song, it really touched you. You really felt it. And whether it was about issues that we all live through uh, and experience, uh, he had a way of putting the most simplistic words together with a nice melody that really made you feel it. And uh, that's a very, very special talent for a very, very special person. 
and I think there will never be another Jose Alfredo Jimenez. On behalf of the City of Los Angeles, thank you so much to the family. Muchísimas gracias por todo lo que ha hecho Jose Alfredo Jimenez por nosotros aquí en Los Angeles, como en México y todo el mundo. Felicidades. También cantó las canciones de los braceros. Gracias, sí. Thank you. Well, we're going to go back and take some photos in the back room. Vamos a tomar unas fotos acá atrás. Por favor, pasen por aquí. Thank you very much, Mr. Wizar. Madam Clerk, what's the next item? Item number three, call special for cards. Thank you. John Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or Jay Walsh Confidential, uh, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Uh, the issue now is uh, item three on the regular agenda. This concerns the pipeline franchise revenue. Okay. We have oil pipelines buried not very deep under the ground here in L.A. Now, 10, must be 12 years ago, 15 years ago, we predicted that when there would be, when there was a major earthquake, that the pipelines would rupture and oil would spill all over the, the city. In fact, if you go back, the story was buried in the newspaper, but the Northridge earthquake created a rupture. Hollywood Highlands dot org. Juan Icala. Uh, yes, uh, that's a lot of, a lot of money for uh, pipelines. Uh, we should start thinking about going green, you know, uh, get rid of all that messy oil and, um, create uh, new sources of uh, renewable energy like the Japanese do. They, they use the tidal wave, the tides, to, um, to create energy. Um, they use electrical cells to create energy. They use uh, pig excrement to create gas, which powers energy. They use human excrement. I think we do the same thing, Hyperion, right? I'm talking about energy sources that would replace oil, right? We need a lot of shit in this world to create a better way to create gas for everybody, okay? Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised everybody agrees. We usually don't agree with each other, but today it seems like... Uh, we are meshing somehow. Uh, Mr. President, this is an item regarding um, the pipeline. The property. Yeah, money for the pipeline. What about money for the homeless? You tweet. You had to speak, didn't you? Uh, uh, please note, Mr. City Attorney, the uh, language of the speaker. Thank you. No other cards? Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item. Item number four, call special for cards. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. This is a motion relative to funding to support community services in Council District 9. That's Mr. Current Price's district. Yeah, of course, let me tell you, your district needs 10 times as much money as, as 
nine is getting. You come to 13, where the white people live and where the show business is, you could eat off the floor. Everyone knows there's racial prejudice here. And the three people from black districts get bupkis. You know what bupkis means in He's Yiddish? Not talking about this it means side. animal shit. And hey, I'm telling Mr. you Walsh. right now that I'm 100% in favor of every dime going into the community. Now, that's a community I worked in as a substitute teacher for a quarter of a century. I'm very well known in, in, uh, in South L.A. And I'm telling you, there's only one place that's filthier than South L.A. because of neglect, and that's the county section of East L.A. HollywoodHighlands.org. We need... And I'm telling you, anybody out there from Council District 9 or any of those African-American council districts, get on them. The money is here, and it goes west of La Brea for white people. And Why remember not what call they it? call me, traitor to my race. Why not, Kyla? If I were a rich man, but I don't Anyway, uh, he's right, you know. Wait a minute. I was wearing the wrong hat. If I wear a rich man, that's better. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he's talking about the rich Jewish communities, et cetera. Uh, Speak to the issue, please. Yeah, the issue is the, the, the poor communities don't get nothing. They get to eat shit. That's That's... He said it the right way. Uh, you favor the rich and you let the poor eat shit. That is not right. You know? He, he is not you talking about elected. the All right, thank you. You're not talking about the issue, says that. Speak to the issue last morning. Okay. The issue here is that uh, some communities get more than others. And uh, we don't need that. We really don't. We need equality for all. We are the people. Remember the Constitution? We, the people of the United States of America, even if you came across the border illegally, you're still one of the people, okay? Uh. All right, that completes the public comment cards. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 eyes. Next item. Item 5, cost pleasure for cards. Mr. Walsh. And Mr. President, for the record, um, Councilmember Price has already moved the CEO recommendations. Thank you very much. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. This concerns a uh, multifamily conduit revenue bonds for three affordable housing projects. Fortunately, these are in uh, low-income neighborhoods, East 48th Street, Figueroa Street, uh, 6301 South Normandy. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the uh, city council people from those districts for uh, uh, putting them there. But remember, the last thing they want, the white people, and I speak as a white man, the, when you're gone, what do we say amongst one another when there are no minorities? Put all the low-cost housing in minority neighborhoods and keep it away from our neighborhood. And my great-grandmother was a Jewish Hungarian who escaped the Holocaust. Keep all the low-cost housing east of La Brea and south of Wilshire so that we can keep West L.A. lily white. And there isn't a black person in or uh, Hispanic who will disagree with what I say. Now, why shouldn't these people in the low-cost live in a nice neighborhood? Because of institutional racism in this city and the field hands, the Uncle Toms, who, uh, and I'll say it, the Uncle Toms who go along with it and have to live in these neighborhoods. And incidentally, when they, when they leave the office, uh, the blacks always move into a white neighborhood. HollywoodHighlands.org. Juan Icala.
political horse. His name is Horseshit. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, whatever he said, whatever he said, I second. And uh, whatever those guys were singing about those Mexicans, I second too. I grew up with uh, Mr. Jimenez, and Mr. Jimenez did a lot for me. He told me that life is for those who take it. Sigo siendo el rey, no seas güey. That completes the item. Five. You see no other moment. Mr. Price, we note that. Thank you so much. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. God bless John for all. Next item. Mr. President, would, do you wish to recess the regular meeting and uh, begin the special meeting? Yes, uh, let's uh, do that as well. Follow your suggestion. Blumenfeld, Bond, and Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Fuentes, Wizard, Caresca, Corn, LaBange, Martinez, O'Farrell, Parks, Price, West, and 30 members present, a quorum, Mr. President. Yeah. Item number six is an item for which a public hearing has been held. Public hearing has been held? All right, so just for the record, we, we note these cards that are here. And if you would just note the cards uh, by name, Madam Clerk, I'll hand you the cards. Since the public hearing has been held, you note the cards. Thank you very much. There's, uh, this item is before us, members. Any, any comment on that? And so I would ask then, if we go forward, Mr. City Attorney, and ask the clerk. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. And there's a request for that item to go forthwith. Forthwith. Thank you. No, no problem. Item Next number seven item. is an item for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes required for consideration. For consideration, let's open the roll. Without objection. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Without <laughs> objection, then it's before us. Okay. There are cards in this item, Mr. President. Yes, we're going to call the cards right now. John Walsh. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Los Angeles is the arson, unsolved arson capital of the world. Hollywood Library, unsolved arson. Downtown Library, unsolved arson. Little Country Church of, Holly of Hollywood, unsolved arson. I could go on and on and on, but now the FBI is in here investigating the unsolved arson case of Da Vinci. The day after the bombing, firebombing, uh, ATF, the feds called it accelerant. You Google accelerant and see what you get. It was a firebomb in there. First, Weezer wanted to blame the, uh, the uh, homeless. Then they caught a, a black man walking by. Let's blame it on the blacks. Now they want to blame it on the eco-terrorists. Number one, $75,000. It should be a million dollars reward. And uh, the owner, G.H. Palmer, he is uh, uh, putting up $75,000 too. What happens, and I don't know, if G.H. Palmer was involved, is he going to pay the uh, reward to himself? Take a look what it looks like out there on the freeway. You know what the cops are telling people? No, 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 no. That's a suit. That's the, all the uh, devastation that sits there for the world to see uh, from the freeway downtown where the Da Vinci was. They're saying, oh, that's a... Uh, motion picture set for a film we're doing on bombing Iraq. It looks like Iraq. The LAPD Beck said immediately it was not criminal. In fact, the ATF is in here. It took them 10 minutes when they put their dog in there. You were about to say this was an unsolved crime. Remember, the second a criminal investigation happens, no insurance money is paid out. If the ATF hadn't shown up, Palmer would have received the entire amount of money. Juan Icala. Uh, well, there's a lot of 
It's a lot of horseshit going on because uh, all these arsons, by coincidence, are in places where the city needed the space for something else. So coincidentally, uh, these fires happen when somebody uh, actually needs uh, the space for another, you know, housing development. What does housing development mean? High rises where you put people are cockroaches. You kick them out of their regular living places and you put them there. So each time there's one of these fires, I remember the one in Hollywood, suddenly there are plans to build a multi-level affordable housing, which means it's not even affordable at all. When you call it affordable housing, what does it mean? People cannot even afford $200 a month. All right, he just not complete your comments. Side. It completes that. Eric Previn. Good morning, Mr. LeBonge and other council members. It is Eric Previn, a uh, resident of Studio City and uh, a council uh, district two candidate uh, running against Mr. Krikorian, who uh, is not here today. Item number seven uh, is in connection with that uh, horrible fire. And we are, this is a reward, uh, which was uh, handed out nicely by Mr. Wezar a couple days ago, but now it's on the agenda officially. And I want to thank him uh, for doing, oh, he's left also, but uh, I wanted to thank him for, for doing that. Um, and I wanted to ask, because I know Louis Brisbois, Bisgard, and Smith, which is the law firm that was uh, singed by this uh, particular fire, um, you know, they are a great firm who have a lot of uh, city business. Uh, they, uh, they have a lot of county business. Uh, in fact, they're, um, they're a robust firm. And I was wondering if they could contribute uh, in some way uh, to this reward to bring it even higher. Uh, you know, I can gather, and I will, uh, how much city business they do uh, on a regular basis, certainly, so that the, the public and the council can be fully aware of that. Uh, I think it's interesting, and I think that this a firm like this, uh, who have a, a great tower that we can see uh, in as we drive into town, uh, if we drive, we see the Louis Brisbois, Bisgard, and Smith. I think it just says Louis Brisbois on the building. But um, in light of the considerations regarding attorneys here at uh, the city and the various issues that are, we're facing, including the city attorney who's going to shut me down now regarding the cure and correct on... He's not talking about this yeah. item. Okay. Well, but I would like a response, sir. So we could do it off camera. Thank you. Includes comments. Members, no other comments out. Let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. 13 ayes. Next Mr. item. Mr. President, there's a request for the item to go forthwith. Absolutely, forthwith. Do you wish to adjourn the special and return to the regular? Yes. Mr. President, that brings counsel to general public comment. Mr. Previn. Yes, it is Eric Previn, uh, once again, city resident, uh, and also a candidate for council seat district two. Um, Mr. Wesson uh, is uh, our leader. He is the council president. And I have spoken with a number of you personally about the size of the frame for members of the public who come down to this meeting. And as you note on Channel 35 today, uh, it is not a visible frame, uh, which meets somebody's needs, but it is not fully in the interest of residents who want to see members of the public who participate in our meetings. Um, I've asked Mr. Wesson, because it is his discretion, and I'm very hopeful that he will uh, open the process to residents. There have been a lot of important stories about this in our uh, press in uh, a town, not in Los Angeles. They've asked to have younger people participate in the voting. We want to do something to dramatically improve the engagement numbers that uh, in LA are among the worst. We are, and it's worth noticing, um, 49th out of 50. In, Next speaker in, uh, will be Mr. Aikala. I'm 
introducing my political horse today. Uh, his name is Horseshit, which is very appropriate for this. Uh, what do you call this? Is this a horseshoe? This is the horseshoe. And you know what? I'm going to fill it up with horseshit because all you do is give us bullshit. We need more than that. We need a little bit of horseshit. And I'm entirely, I'm entirely on the subject right now because uh, that's what these political agendas are all about. They're all about bullshit and horseshit and taking away uh, monies from people in very illegal ways like parking meters. Who the hell ever voted for a parking meter? What the fuck happened to our democracy? Where is our democracy? At least we have a little bit of freedom of speech. All right, you bullshitters. Do you let, do you, uh, do you, uh, oh, I don't even that know. That completes the comments, and for those, I apologize for the words that he used. <laughs> Mr. Walsh. John Walsh addressing you at Hollywood Dems or Jay Walsh Confidential from the arson capital of the world. And also the FBI, they're not just investigating over here on the Da Vinci fire, which instantly has absolutely no federal connection unless it was terrorism, eco-terrorism, or whether the, the uh, devices were supplied by ISIS because there's no one on the planet Earth that can produce a device that sophisticated to blow up a city block other than the people who c create bombs for ISIS. The ATF and E, uh, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosive, they're in here. The FBI, incidentally, is also in here over at LAUSD on the iPad schedule. You can't move in the city without an FBI agent uh, looking, tracking down one of you uh, people here. I'm telling you right now, the accelerant was a firebomb, and we will find out who the arsonists are. That completes public comment. Madam Clerk. Council has motions for post and referral. So ordered. That clears the desk. Any announcements, members? I want to announce that our great Los Angeles Parks Foundation, and thank you for your efforts, Mr. O'Farrell. Uh, they are uh, having a special event in Griffith Park in my district. It's a half marathon this Sunday morning, 7 o'clock. So that's a great thing. Just go to the Parks Foundation website and come and enjoy. Any other announcements, members? Any adjourning motions? We have one adjourning motion, Mr. Parks. All rise for adjourning motions. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to ask the uh, Doolin family to stand up. Uh, they're here with us today uh, in behalf of their mother. And I want to uh, apologize to some of the language you had to sit through in order to get to this. But we want to ask the council to adjourn in memory of Vivian Annette Doolin, who was born January 29, 1934, uh, to uh, Jose McCowan and Georgia Bonner for, in Detroit, Texas. At the age of five, Vivian's mother, Georgia, died during the birth of her younger sister, Hazel. Uh, the uh, Reverend later do, uh, married Miss Odessa, who raised the two girls as her own. During her early childhood, her parents moved the family from Texas to Oklahoma City, where they stayed and grew up into adult age. As a young child, Vivian attended uh, grade school and Douglas High School in Oklahoma City. She later transferred to Dunbar High School when the family moved to Hobart, Oklahoma. As a daughter of a Baptist minister, Vivian knew the Lord and accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She was baptized at Union Baptist Church uh, in 1946. She grew up in the church singing in the choir and attending Bible study in Sunday school. After graduating from high school in 1953, Vivian attended Langston University, where she majored in pre-nursing. She was later accepted and attended St. Francis School of Nursing, where she graduated in 1956 with a degree in registered nursing. 
Uh, Vivian met Adolf Doolin at Langston University, and they were married uh, by Reverend Wade at Pilgrim Baptist Church in Oklahoma City in 1956. The union produced three children, Gregory Arnold, Jeffrey Durrell, and Terry Wayne Doolin. The couple lived briefly in El Paso, Texas, while Adolf was stationed in the United States Army. After the birth of their first son, they moved to Los Angeles, where they raised their three sons. Vivian loved learning and always aspired to be the best nurse she could be. She also believed in and knew the value of education as a means of advancement. She furthered her, furthered her nursing career by attending Loma Linda University, where she graduated in 1962 with a bachelor's degree in nursing. Her first nursing job was at General Hospital in Los Angeles. She later left General Hospital to become a Los Angeles County public health nurse. To further advance her career, she attended Pepperdine University, where she graduated with a master's degree in public administration in 1976. Vivian is the first black nursing director in LA County. She achieved this promotion following the Watts riot in 1965. At the time of her promotion, she was only one of 13 nursing directors in the entire state of California. Up until then, that position was not offered to minorities, but only to white nursing applicants. She was personally instrumental in promoting many of the black nurses in LA County during her directorship. She also encouraged nurses to pursue further education so they could advance their careers professionally as she did. Vivian attended and raised, attended and raised her son in the Angeles Mesa Presbyterian Church. She was a strict mother and always had high expectation for her three sons. After her divorce, she worked two jobs to raise her sons. Many days she came home too tired to do anything. Nevertheless, she pushed on for the sake of her sons, tending to their needs. She was a dedicated mother as well as a dedicated nurse uh, who worked from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. as a Los Angeles County nurse. Later, she would go to her second hospital job at night from 11 p.m. to 7 in the morning. Vivian was active in several professional and social organizations. She's a member of the C Council of Black Nurses. Uh, she also was an Eastern Star and wore, rose to the rank of worthy matron. She was a member of the Egyptian Court No. 5 Daughters of Isis, and she also was a member of the JCETs. Uh, the, these, through her organization, she was active and participated in many community-oriented events. Vivian is survived uh, and will be greatly missed by her sons, Gregory, Jeffrey, and Terry, and a host of other family members. Uh, she will have her funeral service be held on Thursday, January 29, 2015, at Inglewood Park Cemetery in the Manchester Chapel at 2 p.m. God bless her soul and what a life she lived. Mr. Bruce Gaino. Thank you. To the family, may God bless and comfort you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Colleagues, I ask that we adjourn in memory of Dorothy Jean Perez of San Pedro, passed away peacefully at her home in, on January 18th. She was preceded in death by her loving husband, Ruben Perez, both very active in the um, San Pedro community, very much so in the, the Mary Star of the Sea Parish. Um, Dorothy was survived by her daughter, Diane Miller, uh, her son-in-law, Corey Miller, her son, Daniel, Daniel Perez, and as well as stepchildren, uh, Anne-Marie Macy, Kenny Perez, Michael Perez, her 11 grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. She's also survived by three sisters and one brother. May Dorothy Jean Perez rest in peace. Thank you. Members, uh, this concludes our meeting today. Continue to serve the city well. Remember those who went before us. We thank the staffs here at the council for all their help, especially Kenny on the sound. This meeting is adjourned.